it's Nikki here and welcome to a bookish Friday video so today's video is going to be my August TBR now for August I am taking part in two readathons so I'm just going to show you the books that I'm going to be reading for both uh, readathons if I do pick up any other books like buddy reads or just uh, picking up on a whim to read I will show you those in my wrap ups but I'm just going to show you the books that I am going to read for the readathons for now uh, these readathons are both for the full month of August the first readathon that I'm going to be taking part in is one that I also did last year and really enjoyed so when they said were we up for a round two I was like yes uh, and that is the Disneyathon. So this, um, I believe they have a Twitter account. Um, so I'll try and leave the link for that below if I figure that one out. Um, if not, I will leave the Disneyathon announcement video for you down below because I know they have announced it on YouTube as well. Um, and last year I was on Team Tangled. This year. I took their little quiz to try and find out which team I should be on and it came up with Beauty and the Beast but um, I'm not, I'm a rebel, I'm a rebel and I'm not going to do that because how dare they suggest I be on Team Beauty and the Beast when there was a Team Little Mermaid available how did I not get that? <laughs> So, yeah, sod you, Beauty and the Beast. No, I'm Team Little Mermaid. Why I did the test, I don't know. I was always going to be Team Little Mermaid, no matter what the results of the test was. But apparently, I'm more suitable for Beauty and the Beast. I'm not. I'm a mermaid. I, I, I have a serious problem. I'm a 40-year-old woman. I shouldn't be so obsessed with mermaids. Sod it, I don't care. I love mermaids. <laughs> Go mermaids! Um, <clears throat> right, back to normal. So, Team Little Mermaid, uh, you have prompts according to each character and then you have one character that gives you kind of like a superpower. Uh, for Team Little Mermaid, it is King Triton who gives us our superpower. So I will let you know what that is now. Uh, King Triton has bestowed you with lightning power so you can read any team books without following the map but first completing your own team prompts. So there is a map of four islands so each island is a team so we have team little mermaid team beauty and the beast team hercules and team what was the other one what was the third one fourth one um and on the map it shows you arrows in which way through the map you can go so once you've finished your team's prompts you can <clears throat> you can continue on to other teams' islands and fulfil their prompts. Um, but, however, King Triton gives us the power to decide which island we want to go. We don't have to follow the map at all. So, yes, I don't know if I'll move on to any of the other teams' prompts. If any of the other books that I'm reading during the month fit into those prompts, I might put them down because for each prompt you get team points. Um, so it will help my team if I do complete more books um, because, of course, I want Team Little Mermaid to win. Uh, I'm not competitive. I'm not competitive at all. So for Ariel's prompt, <laughs> uh, this, is, this is my Ariel doll. Look, she got tail and everything. Uh, my beautiful daughter, Rowena, bought her for me from the Disney store. Isn't she gorgeous? She's so pretty! So, for Ariel's prompt, uh, we need to read a book featuring a singer as the main character. Um, <clears throat> don't sing the club. <clears throat> Leave it to the professionals. Um, and you'll be surprised at how hard this prompt was actually to fill. Out of all the books on my shelves, sorry Ariel uh, I could I couldn't think of a single one and then I thought to myself oh I really wish I hadn't read the ballads of songbirds and snakes two months ago because I could have used that one and then I thought yes yeah, silly sod 
We had the Hunger Games. You can sit down now. So we had the Hunger Games. Because Katniss sings to little Roo. You know, the little girl. You know, to little Roo. So, yeah, I'm going to be reading The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. If you don't know what this is about, really, where have you been? Like, seriously, where have you been? Um, so, yeah, I've been wanting to do my reread of this trilogy since reading the ballads of songbirds and snakes so this is a great opportunity to get that started um i know i was going to buddy read this with charlotte so we might be starting this together um i don't know um i'll have to talk to her about that um we're starting a buddy read in august but we had planned something else so i don't know if she will or not but um yes the hunger games so that is that one for flounder uh, we have to read a book with a great friendship because of course Flounder is the best friend he's so kind and so caring he's a little bit of a guppy I'm not a guppy yes you are uh, so yes we have a guppy um, so for this one I chose Charmcaster uh, which is the third book in the Spellslinger series by Sebastian de Castell do you want to sit down now? Okay. And this one, as I say, is the third book, and so I can't really go into what this one is about, but Spellslinger, the first book, is about this young boy called Cal, I want to say, Kellen. Kellen, I've had a lot of cows recently. Uh, Kellen, he is the young son of like a mage, and he is preparing for his uh, test, for his magic thing uh there's just one problem he doesn't have any magic and so he's kind of struggling on how to trick his way through the test um because if he doesn't manage to pass the test then he along with the other people in his society who don't have magic will become slaves to the ones who do have magic uh, like his uncle. His uncle doesn't have magic and so he's pretty much a slave in his father's house. So um, yeah and in this book he has a great friendship with this cat squirrel creature here who is, I can't remember his name, it's been a while since I read this, um, but he's quite sarcastic and he has a fascination with wanting to eat everybody's eyeballs so that's nice um, but also Kellen has a great friendship with a woman who um, has a great trick with cards and um, she is helping him to find his destiny and uh, discover who he is and what's the matter with him why he doesn't have magic so yes this is the third book so i don't have um a cuddly toy for the next character which is prince eric i'm looking for him i'm, I'm looking for him um uh, and so for prince eric um i have my own prince eric that's my husband scott um but i can't call him because he's downstairs uh read a book <laughs> by your favorite author now i had to think about this because i was like who do i love like i love virginia andrews but i don't have any of her books so i thought who do i who have i been shouting and screaming about in recent videos sarah j mass so i am on to the third book already yeah i have been flying through the uh i don't know what series this is called but it started with um, A Court of Thorns and Roses. I don't know if this has a series name, actually. But the Court of Thorns and Roses series. I've been flying through these books. This one is huge. It is 699 pages. But come on, it's Sarah J Maas. I'm used to this by now. Um, so this is A Court of Wings and Ruin. It is the third book so again i can't really tell you about what happens in this one because i don't know i haven't read it yet um but in a court of thorns and roses it's basically a beauty and the beast retelling so we have a main character Feyre, who is out hunting one day she kills a wolf which she later discovers was actually a fae in wolf's clothing <laughs> um 
and so one of the other fae comes along and tells her she has to pay a life debt life for a life and she has to go and live with this new fae in his castle in his home uh forever and she cannot return to her family um <clears throat> and while she's there romance ensues and in the second book more romance ensued i'm literally confused as to who i like in this book <laughs> um but yeah i i have read the second book in july so you will see what i think about that in my july wrap up which will be coming early august um but yeah i'm excited to carry on i believe that there is a new one of these coming out early 2021 so after this we have a short novella which nobody seems to like um but i do own that um so after that my reading of these will stop because there are no further books out after this and the novella so yes i i hope it doesn't hang on too much of a cliffhanger because that would be annoying <laughs> but it's sarah j mass of course it is uh so yeah i'm going to be reading this one for prince eric the next prompt is for ursula hi so this is ursula she has her tentacles and everything she's awesome i love my ursula my daughter bought me this one as well i'm so excited look we match hello god when my hair goes white i literally will be ursula i just need the necklace as well um anyway so for ursula see this is why i had to be little mermaid team i have the plushies uh, so for Ursula, we have to read a book in which a character changes their appearance often because, you know, in The Little Mermaid, Ursula becomes Vanessa and she changes into a beautiful brunette because brunettes have more fun. Um, so yes, she does change her appearance. Um, I love you. I love you so much. Ursula is my favourite character in The Little Mermaid. Not The Mermaid. Ursula. She's awesome. Poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. This one longing to be thin and that one wants to get the girl. And do I help them? Yes, indeed. Anyway, we'll put her down. <sighs> so for that... <laughs> For that prompt, I am going to be reading a mermaid book. Uh, this is The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. I thought this highly appropriate for Ursula characters because in The Little Mermaid, we have a mermaid. We have Ursula, who is a sea witch. And then we have the sea, where they all live. So I thought this was the most appropriate book I could pick for this prompt. And I do believe that the main character in this is uh, transgender, I believe. I think. I'm not 100% sure. But she kind of goes, the pirate Florian, born Flora, has always done whatever it takes to survive. Um, so... Florian was born a girl but dresses as a boy or sees themselves as a boy so I believe it does um, have a transgender character in here so that's someone who has changed their appearance um, and uh, they're sailing under a false flag on the dove as a marauder, thief and worse and then Lady Evelyn Hasegawa, a highborn imperial daughter is on board as well accompanied by her own casket she going to her death um but lady evelyn's one-way voyage to an arranged marriage in the floating islands is interrupted when the captain and crew show their true colors and enslave their wealthy passengers both florian and evelyn have lived their lives by the rules and whims of others but when they fall in love they decide to take fate into their own hands no matter the cost so there's a lot of people changing their looks their their persona in here so yes and um, there's a face in the sea can you see that so I don't know if the sea has a persona as well in this I don't know uh, the air there's a face in the sky as well 
Um, so this is intriguing me and I can't wait to read it. So yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of people changing their appearance, changing who they are in here, but I just thought it's so appropriate for this. I had to get it in to this readathon because it's just the mermaid, the witch and the sea. Like if there wasn't a little mermaid book more appropriate than this. I don't know. So yes, I'll be reading that one for that prompt. And then finally we have Sebastian. I tell you what you're going to have. A stuffed crab, that's what you're going to have. <laughs> huh, somebody near that girl's fins to the floor. <laughs> Under the sea. Under the sea. I, I'm getting carried away here. Um, okay, so for Sebastian, we have to read the group book. Now, there was a poll put upon Twitter and there was a couple of books. Um, in fact, The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea was one of those books that was put into the poll. And I was hoping it was going to win, but it didn't. The book that won was actually A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. Now, here in the UK, it's not published just yet. However, I have managed to get an audiobook of it on my Kindle Fire. So, is it on my Kindle Fire or on Scribd? It might be on Scribd. So, I will hopefully be listening to the audiobook on Scribd. I can't remember. It's on one of them. It's, it's an audiobook. So, I'll be listening to uh, A Song Below Water uh, by Bethany C. Morrow on audiobook for the prompt so yes i will be reading that um if not um then i will choose a different book that has a mermaid in it because let's be real i have quite a few mermaid books uh, that i could put in for this prompt as long as it's got a mermaid in it i think it will be appropriate um so yeah i will be reading a song below water for that one so that is it that is my little mermaid team um readathon with all my plushies i hope you enjoyed seeing them so let's move on to the second readathon so sadly i have no cute plushies for this readathon so you'll just have to do with plain old me um and it is for the newts now um because of the big hoo-ha regarding jk rowling and her very controversial thoughts and feelings that she made public during Pride Month. Um, G from Book Roast has decided to pull away from doing the Harry Potter themed readathons. She doesn't feel comfortable supporting or um, sort of advertising Harry Potter and merchandise and the books anymore in case that encourages other people to buy from jk rowling because as i say g from book roast no longer feels comfortable in supporting jk rowling anymore um which is fair dues you know each to their own um i don't really like the books anyway so i'm not really that fussed um but she has said that she's going to do the newts for this time round. But as from next year, instead of calling them the owls and the newts, which are based on the exams in the Harry Potter world, she's still going to do the magical readathon, but it's not going to be based on the Harry Potter world. So there will still be prompts, there will still be magical classes i suppose but it's not going to be harry potter themed anymore so i'm excited to see what she's going to come up with next year um she's very imaginative so i'm sure it's going to be amazing whatever she does um so this will be the last newts i will be taking part in um but i did want to complete them this year because i did start them in the owls and i would really like to get my librarian career so I'm going to do that. So for my librarian career, for my newts, I have to get an O in Ancient Runes, 
an E in Defence Against the Dark Arts and an E in History of Magic. So um, I will link G's uh, announcement video for you down below. So if you watch that, you'll understand the meaning of the um, gradings. Um, so that means that I have to read three bunk three bunks no three books for ancient ruins i have to read two books for defense against the dark arts and two books for the history of magic so let's go through them so for ancient ruins to get my a which is unacceptable uh, i have to read a book whose author name starts with the letter b so for that one, I'm going to read Red Glove, which is book two in the Curse Workers, the Curse Workers trilogy by Holly Black. So I did read um, the first book in the Owls earlier this year. So I thought it only appropriate that I move on to the second book in the Newts. So the Curse Workers uh, trilogy is about a boy who believes that he's cursed. Uh, simple as that. Uh, Castle, I think is his name. And um, he's at school when we first see him in the first book, which was The White Cat. And he wakes up and he's on the roof of the school. And he's having vivid dreams. And um, he has to work out why he's cursed and, um, yeah, and what's happened to him and why he keeps seeing this white cat. Um, so yeah, I am intrigued to carry on with this. Um, I might have to recap what happened in the White Cat before I move on to this one, but I'm very excited to move on. To get an E, which is exceeds expectations, I need to read a classic. So for that one, I'm going to read Bedknobs and Broomsticks uh, by Mary Norton. So I have this edition. Uh, these editions were sold by the Scarborough Evening News. Scarborough is a town that I used to live in when I was younger, actually. Uh, it's a seaside town, a good old British seaside town. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is a quintessential English classic where we have three children who have been evacuated from London out to the countryside. They go and stay with this old woman and called Miss Price. And she's actually a wannabe witch and she's trying to find a missing page out of a spell book so that she can finish her spell. And she goes off to meet uh, Mr. Amel Professor Emilius Brown and they go off on this bed and they have to twist one of the bed knobs. In order to make it move it's magical i love the film bobbing along at the bottom of the beautiful blimey sea anyway i love the movie so i'm hoping that i'm going to really really enjoy the book as well to get an o which is outstanding i believe you have to read a romance so I'm doing that. I'm reading a Mills and Boone romance. This is The Wicked Lord Raisinby by Margaret Kay. So there she is with her Wicked Lord Raisinby. A scandalous pro proposition only a rake would accept. Uh, so yes, um, romance, what can I say? Charlotte calls these dirty. They're not dirty, sweetheart. They're smutty. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so yes, Mills and Boone, need I say more? Uh, so for Defence Against the Dark Arts, my A is to read a horror or a thriller. So I'm going to read Before We Met by Lucy Whitehouse. And it says the most dangerous lies are those closest to home. Uh, so it's a whirlwind romance, perfect marriage. Uh, Hannah Riley sees the chance of happiness until the day her husband doesn't come home. Can you ever really know what happened before you met? So, yeah. Um, this might be a little close to home. Me and my husband had a bit of a whirlwind romance. We only knew each other a year before we got married. But you know what? In September, we celebrate our fourth year wedding anniversary. So, 
you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah, I'm excited to read this. Uh, I've been in the mood to read thrillers a bit more recently. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. The For my E in Defence Against the Dark Arts, I need to read a book with demons or water theme. Uh, now, because I've got a couple of mermaid books in my Little Mermaid readathon, I didn't really want to pick another mermaid book, so I've chosen this one. Uh, this is Scatterheart by Lily Wilkinson, and as you can see here, there's a ship here, and this young girl, and it looks like waves and things around here. And this is about a girl called Hannah, uh, who is rich and spoiled, with servants to wait on her hand and foot, and a young, handsome tutor to teach her. Um, but then it's taken all away, alone, penniless and starving. Hannah is sentenced to transportation, so life on the convict ship is hard and brutal, and Hannah loses her innocence but comes to understand herself. Extraordinary adventure with an unforgettable heroine. I haven't heard anyone talk about this i haven't seen any reviews or anything i found this i want to say in a charity shop i think i can't remember um but yeah i'm going to read this one it shouldn't be too bad uh how big are you 375 pages so it shouldn't be too long to read uh so for history of magic for my A, which is acceptable, I need to read an historical fiction. Well, for that, I'm turning to Mills and Boone again, because this one is a uh, historical romance. Yeah, historical. There, it says historical. Uh, so this one is a historical romance. I do want to try and get my Mills and Boone collection down, because it's not one that I turn to very often anymore. Um, and I have quite a few of these. Uh, if you watch my mid-year freakout tag, you'll see how many of them I had. Uh, so this is Besieged and Betrothed by Jenny Fletcher. It looks like it's a Scottish Highlands one. Um, bound to her enemy. Uh, ruthless warrior Lothar the Frank has laid siege to Castle Howard. But there's a fiery redhead in his way and she's not backing down. Ooh, good. Uh, Stand up for yourself, woman. Uh, more tomboy than trembling maiden, Lady Juliana Danville would rather die than lose the castle. Caught on opposite sides of a war, Lothar and Juliana find a marriage bargain is being brokered to bring peace. But is blissful married life possible when Juliana has a dangerous secret hidden within the castle walls? We shall find out. Uh, sassy redhead. Yes. Looking forward to this one. Should be quick. They normally are gonna get that one out and the final book i'm very excited about this actually because the prompt for the exceeds expectations for history of magic is to read a book with a black cover so i went through my books and i chose three i took one out of the um decision making because it was longer than the other two and then i put them side by side on my desk and i shouted down to my husband left or right sweetheart and he shouted i can't remember which one he chose actually but the one he chose was this one uh so i can't remember if he shouted left or right it was ages ago uh so this is the sisters grim by mena van prague and it was like this and this is the actual hardback it's not a natural paper covering like most hardback books have um and it says four sisters three will live one will die Ooh. Uh, so uh, they found each other at eight were separated at 13 now they're nearly 18 and must find each other again this is the story of four sisters grim daughters born to different mothers on the same day each born out of bright white wishing and black edged desire in 33 days the sisters will meet their father in a place they go to when they dream only then will they discover who they truly are and what they can truly do. Then they will fight to save their lives and the lives of the ones they love. So, yes, very exciting. And I just love this cover. It's so stunning. So beautiful. And the inside's papers, just stunning. So, yeah, very excited to read this one. Uh, this is 482 pages, so it might take me a little bit longer than the others, 
but yeah so I'm very excited to read that one so that is it that is my August TBR so we have nearly dropped them these four books plus an audio book of um, A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrows for my Disney readathon uh, Team Little Mermaid and then these are the books that I will be reading for the Newts which is hosted by G from Book Roast Channel um, for my career as a librarian so that is it that is my August TBR I hope you enjoyed it if you did please like comment and subscribe and me and Sebastian say bye see you soon <laughs>